afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christine Tumal Kabatnot. I am with the Tumal Law Office. We have offices in Darien, Illinois, and Metro Washington, D.C., and we specialize in immigration law, U.S. immigration law and nationality law. Um, so thank you for joining us today. We have you lovely people live here in Metro Center, Bohol, Philippines. But we also have you join us via Zoom. Now, people via Zoom, can you just let us know if you can hear us and see us okay? So go ahead and chat with us because we have you muted. Just let us know if you can hear us. If, or if you can't hear us, let us know so that we can fix that. So thank you for joining us via Zoom from around the world, and thank you for joining us via live Facebook. We're happy that you can join us today. Thanks for letting us know you can hear us all right. Again, my name is Christine, and uh, we are really excited to present this to you today. I think it is the perfect time to do so. We have many employers who are looking for qualified registered nurses. And that is what we're going to talk about today, the immigrant visa petition, which means that when they petition you, you get approved, you go to the U.S. and start working for your employer, you will be a green card holder. So you cut through the non-immigrant employment working visa and go straight to a green card um, visa and a lawful permanent resident type of visa. But before I move further, I want to tell you a little bit about our law firm, um, the Tumul Law Office. Um, and I want to present to you the person who started it all more than 20 years ago, Attorney Renato Dumagan Tumul. He is the son of Bohol. Actually, he is from Albuquerque, Bohol, Philippines. And uh, he was an attorney here. He graduated from San Beda Law School. In fact, was a local mayor at our hometown, Albuquerque Bowl, before we moved and immigrated to the United States. Uh, we were immigrants, and so we know what it's like, what the journey is like. This is more than just a law firm at Tumul Law Office. You're more than just a client. You're a part of our family because we started this journey just like a lot of the immigrants who immigrated to the United States. Um, and without further ado, let me present to you the principal and the attorney who started it all, my big boss, also my father, Attorney Renato Dumagan Dumal. Thank you, Attorney Christine, for uh, for your very beautiful and wonderful introduction. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. To those who are here physically present at the Metro Center, and also those who are watching us live online on the Zoom and Facebook. So, as what has, uh, Christine mentioned, we have this law firm. For more than 20 years now, we started sometime in 2000, and we specialized in immigration law, employment based for healthcare workers like registered nurses, uh, medical technologists, uh, physical therapists, uh, doctors, or physicians, and all other healthcare workers that are interested to move and work in the United States. So we have dealt a lot of employers and we have placed nurses for the past 20 years. And if we have to count them, it could be more than 100 of them. More than 100? More than a, a thousand. A, maybe a thousand. <laughs> so we have done a lot of work. Uh, we have represented employers for direct hire uh, nursing, uh, employment based nurse petitions. And we have also employed, uh, we have also represented some recruitment agencies, but now we focus and we just uh, represent direct hire employers. We do not represent any agencies. So we do not represent any recruitment agencies, but only employers who are interested to do direct hire employment for registered nurses. So 
the process will be discussed by Attorney Christine. And if you have any questions or any uh, concerns or any apprehensions about how this process is being done, you can always ask us and then we will be happy to answer your questions. So we can proceed with the uh, seminar proper now with Attorney Christine doing the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Renato. So, Attorney Renato has, I would say, almost 50 years of experience as an attorney, right? Attorney Renato? Overall, corporate law, immigration law, um, and he started this law firm more than 24 years ago, so he has seen it all, and in fact, he's one of our most respected immigration lawyers. Uh, we have a small American Immigration Lawyers Association and he's been a member um, for almost 30 years. So he has great knowledge, inside knowledge of what really goes on. So during the discussion portion, we will go ahead and um, have him speak his mind um, and, and the inside knowledge that not a lot of people get to see really or get to have an access to um, unless you have an immigration lawyer uh, give you these details. I want to tell you a little bit more about myself. I uh, became an attorney, oh, this is going to date me, 16 years ago, fresh out of law school. And uh, before I joined Duma Law Office, I actually was hired as in-house counsel and legal editor, cranking out immigration law books um, at the American Immigration Lawyers Association, AILA, in Washington, D.C. My father and I are still members, uh, and I still edit some books for them from time to time. Uh, but what is what I've been doing is expanding the practice, and I used to handle a lot of the other types of uh, working visas, such as religious visas and uh, family-based petitions, and I also go to immigration court. And uh, but lately, as my father has given me more reign of the employment-based petitions, I am happy to be here with you today to talk more about specifically what you can expect when you apply as a registered nurse. Um, so, basically, for this employment-based immigration. It's not just for registered nurses, right? There's so many employment-based immigrations for other types of employment. However, what is special about the registered nurses is you fall under what's called a Schedule A um, petition. And that is because, uh, along with the physical therapists, you fall under the Schedule A because they really need nurses. Um, and it's a way to kind of shorten your processing time, even though it's still some sort of backlog processing time. It starts with the Department of Labor. There are three steps, so we're going to go over each one of them. But very quickly, we start at the Department of Labor to get what's called a labor certification to make sure that your wage is not lower than what it should be. Second, once you have that prevailing wage, um, you will go through and will file with USCIS your immigrant petition called the Form I-140, so the employer will file that. Once that's approved, if you are out of the United States, we will go through the third step, which is consular processing at your home country with the U.S. Department. So let's talk about the first step first, which is obtaining the prevailing wage. This is the first step, the prevailing wage is very important because this is what's going to tell you what your salary should be, whether per hour or per year, in that particular facility which belongs to that zip code community. This is important because if you don't have this prevailing wage, they can just take advantage of you and pay you lower than what you should be paid. So the first step is to obtain this prevailing wage. Now, normally this would have taken a few months at that. However, there's so much backlog that it is taking about six, seven, eight months. So the first thing we do when a potential facility or hospital wants to hire RNs and approach us is to file 
I, I apply for this prevailing wage because while that's ongoing, then we can go with the next steps, such as interviewing potential registered nurses who are interested in applying, moving forward with the steps until we have an approved prevailing wage so that we can move on to step two and actually file the form I-140, which is the immigrant petition with USCIS, um, which is uh, US Department uh, under the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. That's where we file the petitions first. Okay, next slide, please. So before, like I said, this is filing the petition with the I-140. After getting the prevailing wage, if you do not fall under Schedule A, which the nurses fall under Schedule A, if you do not fall under that, the next step under the Department of Labor would have to file the ETA Form 9089 to get a labor certification. However, because you fall under Schedule A, your prevailing wage does not need to go through and be certified by the Department of Labor. What does this mean? We still need to complete ETA Form 9089. However, we can file that along with your prevailing wage, approved prevailing wage, with USCIS with the rest of your application for immigrant petition. That is because you fall under Schedule A. If you didn't fall under that, you would have to file 1989 with Department of Labor and wait another three to five months. So with the Department of Labor alone, you are looking at a year and a half if you had to file everything. However, because you're only filing for prevailing wage, it's only gonna take you between six to eight months, but by the time that we reach you and contact you, most of these facilities already have a prevailing wage. In fact, right now, our direct hire clients already have prevailing wages that are available. So if they interview you, if you're interested in interviewing with them, and you go ahead and get hired, this is gonna move fairly quickly, which is the stop, the I-140. The I-140 normally takes months, but there's something called premium processing, and for a fee, a lot of our client um, employers do avail of these premium processing. It'll only take 15 calendar days. Once that's approved, the I-140 is approved, now the next level, the next stage, is to go to consular processing. So you will go, your documents will go to the National Visa Center, or the NVC, you can upload you can upload your information online such as complete the ds260 um, there are other documents that they want us to mail out that is going to take a couple of months at most once that's completed you can go ahead and be scheduled for interview like i know right now at the u.s embassy in manila um, there's a backlog we know that um, especially with immigrant interviews, because they schedule it. We don't schedule the immigrant interviews, unlike the non-immigrant uh, the non -immigrant interviews we schedule ourselves, so we have more leeway with the calendar. However, there's a bit of a backlog with the immigrant interview schedules, because we are really just waiting for um, the U.S. Embassy to go ahead and um, schedule your interviews. Uh, when it gets to be completely more than five or six months then, that is when we ask to get it expedited. Or even, you know, within a month or two, if the hospital or facility really needs you, we can request to have it expedited. But we cannot guarantee that they will expedite your interview. At least we have the option to request to expedite your interview. Um, can we please slide forward? So we have gone through, I have, I have talked about the final step, which is the application. Um, we talk about since we're here, since we're not in the United States, um, we are going to consular process. However, if you're in the United States and if you're listening to me from the United States, um, there is something called uh, the adjustment of status, which is the, the we file everything there um, at the same time in the United States if there is a visa available. Fortunately and luckily for you, the category which you fall under, which is EB3, um, is current. What does that mean? It means there are visas available. So it is going to move fairly quickly from the approved I-140 to your consular processing interview. And it will take months instead of years. If you are filing an adjustment um, in the United States, so we have 
some clients who are interested, they are student visas, under student visas, and they want to adjust to an RN from where they are right now as a stu uh, student visa holder, then you can adjust and file right now because it's current. The, the status, the visa availability, availability is current. You can go ahead and file that together with the I-140. It's called concurrent filing. Um, but I won't, I won't concentrate on that. I'll concentrate more on the consular processing because uh, most of these RNs that are joining us are not in the United States. Next slide, please. The documents that you'll need. This, the first portion, we will take care of everything. The employer will take care of everything. But this portion, this is what you're responsible for. So uh, the first step before the consular interview, when we initially file everything, um, we are going to need the following, just copies. We don't need originals. Your Philippine passport bio page, your NCLEX State Board of Nursing letter, or any primary source of letter that shows that you have an in-class, um, you, you pass the in-class in a specific state. Now don't worry about where you pass the in-class as long as you are an in-class holder because once you um, a, arrive in the United States, we can apply for reciprocity. So if you're a Texas in-class holder, which a lot of you are, I know, and your job happens to be in Florida or in Indiana, uh, we will. There will be a process um, that the employer and facility will will assist you with obtaining um, uh, the, the correct in class at the state where you will be working via reciprocity. Uh, visa screen. Now, some of you who don't have the visa screen, um, you can apply for it uh, after after the whole process before your consular processing. That's going to take several weeks, so. Uh, we suggest that you go ahead and apply for that. Um, is Krizel here? Is she here yet? Not yet. So we actually have a couple of RNs um, who who are on their way to being interviewed, um, and I know they will join us today, but she went through the process of, of how to get her visa screen. She already, uh, actually her brother did. Christian Is Christian here? No, not yet. Okay, so that so maybe if they want, they can talk a little bit later um, as far as how they get their NCLEX and how they get their visa screen for those of you who have yet to get your visa screen. That's important before you interview at the U.S. Embassy. But what we need right now, really, is if you want to be hired right now um, for serious consideration, you're going to need your NCLEX. If you're still taking your NCLEX or about to take it. Don't worry about it. Um, the hiring process, there are a lot of nursing facilities and hospitals that are hiring. So just go ahead and concentrate on obtaining your NCLEX um, and, and, and passing it basically uh, before, um, before we go ahead and interview you if you're interested to interview with our facilities. Uh, Philippine professional RN card, you have to have that diploma and transcript of records, and your most recent seminar certificates, especially with COVID, we have a lot of free online seminar certificates. Um, they would really like to see see that um, if you have that, about three or four that we'll need. If, um, so we'll need your PSA birth certificate. If you're married, your PSA marriage certificate, uh, and birth certificates of PSA birth certificates of your children. Um, if you have them. We have had instances of people saying, what if we get married between now and during our interview? Um, you can actually have your spouse join you and be a derivative beneficiary, meaning your spouse can, can join you and be a green card holder as a dependent if you become married and have all your information before you interview at the U.S. Embassy because we'll have to add them on as a family member. Um, of course, you're going to need NBI clearance and police clearance from anywhere in the world where you've lived and worked for more than a year since you turned 16 years old. So these are the things you're going to need. I have them available for PDF. Contact me, message us. I will have my email. You have my email address. Let me know if you want this whole PDF slide, and I'm happy to send them to you. So you don't have to you know, take a picture take notes on everything that I said today. So, 
this is what I mean by it is current right now. The visa availability is current right now. You fall under employment-based third category. Um, and right now, Philippines actually has its own category because we come from one of the top countries that are oversubscribed with visas. But fortunately for you who qualify under EB3, it is current right now, right? It is current. Um, however, those under the EB2 category, which is at least a master's degree, um, <laughs> it's retrogressed. No, retrogressed, nah. The ones they are working on right now is November 2022. So what does this mean? We can expect EB3 will retrogress, but it hasn't retrogressed right now. So you still have time right now. The sooner you get this done, the better it is for you because it's still current. But we do anticipate with um, the COVID under control, more people traveling, more people applying, um, and those who have applied before you, we will have some sort of retrogression, but hopefully it's not years of retrogression, not like before. Um, but the sooner we get this in, the better it will be for you. You can find this, the, whatever is the um, current situation with the visa availability, you can find this under the visa bulletin. This one is for January 2023. And in a week or two, if you click on this website, they will have the forecast for February 2023. So that way you can just look and see, is it current, is it not? Slide, please. So there are two types of dates. The first one is the final, where they can schedule you for interview. And the second one is when you can start filing your, um, your, your documents online. And as you can see for EB3, they're both current um, right now. So slide, please. So once you get to your consular interview, we will prep you, you will bring all your information, um, we'll, we'll prep you what to expect with a officer that will interview you. And from there on, um, if you do get approved, you can go ahead and um, make sure you get your visa, I mean your passport stamped. Do not make any traveling arrangements before you get your passport stamped. And then once you have it, you can fly in as um, a, a immigrant visa holder, but you have a temporary stamp on your passport because as soon as you enter the United States and complete the application for the actual card, which you can do online and which we can assist you with, then that's when you'll get your actual green card. You can go ahead and come by yourself, have your family follow to join within six months, or actually have them join you. Each facility, I know you want to talk about what can they what can they offer us? What are the costs? What are you know everything that we can expect? Well, um, all these facilities right now um, that we have that's direct hire our clients are offering basically all the immigration costs, the lawyers' fees, even medical exams, um, St. Luke's, um, all the other fees that you will incur, they will shoulder those. They will also, some of them are offering incentives like three months of free um, apartment, uh, your one-way ticket for free, and there are other things too. I mean, the healthcare benefits and the package, um, package are, you can expect that everywhere, but there are incentives if you come. Uh, the incentive to, I know you asked, it's expensive to take the NCLEX, it's expensive to take the um, the visa screen to have it ready. Uh, case by case, if you talk to them, they will have some sort of repayment plan that we can um, talk to them about, but it is case by case. The only thing they ask of you, there is no salary deduction, and I will have Attorney Renato talk about the differences between having a salary deduction every salary versus no salary deduction, so you're receiving clean um, net pay, uh, salary and payment, uh, but they do ask you to stay, depending on the facility, uh, three or four years. 
and, and you're saying that's a lot of time, but think about it. You're not paying them anything but your time to work there. And there is an option to buy out that particular agreement uh, if you, especially if you've worked for them for a year or two or things just doesn't work out, you can buy out your agreement minus the time that you have worked there. So this is just in general because depending on where you end up, which facility you end up in, it, it's a little different. There's a slight difference, but most of them are offering very generous packages. They're paying basically for everything and they're only asking you to work for them for a certain number of years uh, before you can move on because it is taking a lot of time and money and effort as you saw through that timeline of how we can petition you, how they can petition you, get you to the U.S. from start to finish. Um, so I will open up to discussion now. For those who are in Zoom, please go ahead and type in your questions and we will get to you um, once we cover the rest of the in-person questions. But before that, I will have Attorney Renato come up here and give um, his valuable insights before we go ahead and cover your questions. And if you have questions, please raise your hand. Anyone have questions so far? No? Later? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and I will turn it over to the big boss who knows a whole lot more than I do, even after 16 years of practice for me. Thank you. Uh, there are a lot of things that you should know, that you should be aware of before going to the United States. Many of you will be apprehensive or very reluctant to uh, apply to employers that are not familiar or not known, but uh, easily you can go to their website, read the reviews and read the uh, like if they have been under investigation or they have been uh, there are a lot of complaints like especially for nursing homes you will see the record of their uh, activities by going online and just search the name of the nursing home and their uh, background or their uh, website then you will know that type of employer that you are going to apply so most of the employers that will hire us or that have uh, avail of our services are located in the, uh, not in the big cities. They are in the towns, in uh, small towns, and mostly nursing homes. And it's a good idea to start with a nursing home because uh, the adjustment uh, process would not be too large, to not be too heavy, and to, uh, not to be too... Uh, to use on your part to, uh, if you have to experience or to have to make some adjustments, it is uh, easier to adjust to a nursing home than starting with a big hospital, especially if you will be placed in big cities or uh, big uh, county hospitals, then that would be a lot of problem adjusting to the types of uh, uh, work and the, the, uh, like the procedures and the regulations that you will be uh, following after you are employed with this particular facility or hospital. So, choosing an employer is uh, not really an easy task to be done. You have to rely on us, the attorneys, who, who can tell you if this employer is really reliable or really worth your time to spend your years of working in this facility, if that is what you are planning to do. Uh, most of uh, higher, uh, most of uh, nurses that go to the United States are being re uh, recruited by placement agencies. We are not a placement or recruitment agency. We represent hospitals and nursing homes who will directly hire your services. So that's a lot of difference because for direct hires, they will pay for some of the uh, processing fees or all of the processing fees. Uh, some of your expenses or all of your expenses. It depends on the type of employer that will be needing your services. And what is important is that you have you don't have to pay <coughs> excuse me, anything on what they have spent on uh, the, in the process of recruiting you or they will not ask for any salary deductions. There is no salary deductions. That's, we, that's what we can assure you, what we can be uh, 
but we can guarantee that there is no salary reduction for direct hire employment. Only, <coughs> excuse me, if there is, if you will sign an employment contract, there could be some provisions about breach of contract. If you will not finish the number of years that you will be hired, maybe you, you have to refund the expenses they have uh, incurred in the filing fees, uh, transportation, or free apartment or free lodging. So this could be from five to ten thousand. That's the most. You cannot pay more than 10000 in damages or in uh, expenses if you have to buy out your contract and move to another facility. But if you, don't, if you don't move to another facility, then you don't have to worry about how much you will pay or how, what, what is the salary deduction that will be uh, uh, deducted in, in your salary per hour or uh, usually per hour. So when you compare this to agencies, there are agencies that will require salary deduction of 20 to 30 percent uh, of your hourly rate. So imagine if you are re receiving 30 dollars per hour. What is 30 percent of that? <coughs> Would oh, the like, net pay, not the gross pay. Not the gross pay. Not, it's just the net pay. So that's even smaller. So <coughs> if you receive like 30, I said, I said 30 dollars per hour. So what is? 30% of $30 per hour, so it's like uh, $9. $9. So $9 per hour, you're working like 40 hours per week, 40 hours times $9. And then multiply that with the number of days you will be working in a month. And if you will be getting a salary deduction of uh, that amount for a certain number of years, like three to five years, that's a lot of money. So that what, that's what you have to compare if you go to a placement agency or on the Rikai. Then uh, another thing that you have to uh, consider also is the reliability of uh, those people who represent you in the process. Whether you, uh, you are represented by reliable and uh, honest people who will not uh, take you for granted, who will not uh, take you for a ride and uh, just leave you along the way. So that's the most important thing that you have also to consider. And then, uh, what other matters you would like to know, or you would like to uh, be familiar with, you, have, you can ask questions. So if you have any questions, you can start asking questions. I'll go ahead and do a follow-up as well on my thoughts later, but right now, do we have any questions for those who are here in person? Any question? I promise we won't show you in camera. <laughs> no? Yeah. Okay. And you can just pass it along so I can get the, the phone. I mean, that, the other microphone. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I have a small question. What you should expect in the nursing home? What should you expect as far as working? So here's what we do. Before you will commit, we will actually schedule an informal interview with you and the potential employer. So that way you can ask them, because the nursing homes are different from facility to facility. You can ask them how many beds, how many certified nursing assistants per RN, um, what, how many wings and, and what you are expected. Will the doctors be there every day? Will there be teledoc or telemedicine? Because those are really, and right now what the big thing is, it's, it's, it's so much more um, highly efficient technology. So charting is now, on the computer or some sort of um, online. Um, so medicine, uh, the way you, you you give your medicine and dispense them um, and everything else is now very, very much more highly um, involving high technology. So they will train you for that, no matter how big or small the facility is, they are up to date with that. Um, and that's why it's important that we have you interview with them. We usually do it via Zoom or Viber. You get to meet the, the DON, and sometimes the facilities um, higher up, like the CFO or CEO or president, will join the call. No pressure, they're very nice people. Um, and then you can get an idea of what they're offering, what their facility is like. A lot of these facilities have 
pretty much all of them have websites. You can actually do a Google search, and I'll send you the links so that you can see um, if they are rated top uh, nursing facility. So uh, these ones that we have right now are rated top nursing facilities. So I'm happy to to present them to you and, and have you connect with them if you're interested. And of course, to email me uh, later. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, can we catch you? Hi. Hi. Uh, a while ago, in, um, I heard that something about the Green Guard. So if we do decide to work there, how long, I, can we bring our partner along if we do get married? Yes, yeah, so if, like I said, if you get married before your consular interview here, you get married before then and you have your PSA, marriage certificate and all of that, you can bring your partner along with you. We can add them on as your dependent. Um, how does that go? You know, because I am a citizen in the United States. Oh, you're the oh, I I, I got this email. You're the U.S. citizen, uh -huh. and your fiance is an RN. Yes, but then he's not practicing. He's not practicing. I um I am I am in the process of taking my NCLEX though. I'm still waiting for the return message of the BON, but then I'm in the process of taking my NCLEX, and so we were wondering. How, how does that go about? Do I? You are a U.S. citizen. You have more options. You can bring them on a fiancé visa and bypass this whole employment base petition. Um, because you're a U.S. citizen, you can go ahead and do that. If you go back to the U.S., start working there, um, yes. show paperwork that, yes, you're working there um, and all of that, we can talk later because you do have, that's a better option for you. To have to bring him in either as a fiance visa or to get married here and bring him in for spousal petition. Would that, how long would that take? Like, would he be a green card holder? Um, he would be a green card holder, but that's much quicker because you're a U.S. citizen. It's a current, the visa availability. So it doesn't take years? To no, it takes about eight to ten months. Yes, you will take that. I would take it if I were So you recommend I get married here first before? It's really up to you. If you get married over there, it's called a fiancé visa because you're a U.S. citizen. If you get married here, it'll be a spousal petition and it takes about the same amount of time. Eight to ten months. Yeah. Eight to ten I, I don't need previous working experience there. No. You would need to have what's called, because you will need to show proof that he will not be a burden to the state, so it's a affidavit of support. You will need a secondary affidavit of support because you haven't been working, but you will also need to show proof that you will be working. You have um, what's called, we need to, we, it's, it's a more, it's a different process. You need to show that you are actually also still domiciled over there. So why don't you email me separately and then we can talk more about that okay. option. Because it is on you to show that you're domiciled and you'll start working there and all that kind of stuff. Okay? okay. That's a different process. It's family-based, not employment-based. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything? Anyone else? Do we have... Oh, can you please... Sir, can you give it to Sir... Well, and then... And can you... And can you... Just read out the first question, please. Okay, here's the first question. Hello, good afternoon. Where can we check the list of your clients offering direct hire? So you'd have to email me. We don't, I mean, of course, we have attorney-client confidentiality. If you're interested in applying, please email me your information and to show that you do have the qualifications and then we'll let you know which clients are interviewing and uh, we can set you up an interview. Oh, I'm sorry, Attorney Renato, you wanted to say something. That, that was it? Did that suffice? Yes, we don't we don't broadcast the list. Of course, there's attorney-client privilege, but um, if you're interested, just email me. Next question? Is that it? Yes. <laughs> can I have one last question? Oh, sure, you can have as many questions. This is the discussion portion. So you can have as many, and what, what time? It's only 2.45. Oh, well, we do talk with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as your experience, uh, attorney, um, the employer there, uh, do they entertain without mid-side experience? <coughs> um, so, what I would suggest is you start, depending on where you have, do you have any bedside experience at all in the past? No, because... <laughs> you don't. So, we actually, most of them at this point, will train you. And they said even if you don't have bedside experience, as long as you're willing to 
to work with them and to learn? And yes, I am an, uh, because I am a community health nurse and the okay. Department of Health. Okay. <laughs> they will still. You qualify. Go ahead thank and you, apply. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. We have one more question. We have you. Okay. Does the employer help in the NCLEX processing or we should be the one to process that? You should be the one to process that because they will not the direct hire employees that we have do not um, entertain that without the NCLEX because they want to file as soon as possible. However, it's case by case where whatever expenses you have incurred for passing the NCLEX, not the multiple times, but the one time that you actually pass the NCLEX, we can negotiate some sort of a reimbursement plan. And that's case by case, that's facility per facility. So we can we can we can certainly explore that option for you if, if that is something that you need. I also heard that um, there are different options to study for your NCLEX, and it can get very expensive, right? Um, some of the facilities are charging upwards to for the prep facilities upwards to five thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, so if you have the money for that, or if you want to go ahead and go for it, then do the the facility, you know, where you're in one-on-one -on -one or however um, they have it where you can go to the NCLEX testing center or review center. However, there's also an alternative called online review where you self-review. I know several people who have done online reviews for a fraction of a price and actually passed their NCLEX. So if you want to look to the bid to save some money, um, that is an option. However, you have to really be disciplined and to really focus. So you have to know yourself. Do you benefit from doing an online review or actually going to a testing center or a review center? Okay. Any other questions? Yes, please, sir. Okay, another question from the same person. Do we also qualify even if our bid side experience is just five years ago and not currently practicing? I would suggest that even if it's been five years, right, if you're not currently practicing, I would suggest that you do inter volunteer work at the different facilities or hospitals, hospitals because, like I said, everything is now like highly high technology. And on top of that, you need to remember everything as far as bedside um, and all of that bedside care. So what I have been telling RNs who have not been practicing for a while is to go actually and volunteer. Your local hospitals, the community um, the departments and all of that need your help. So if you can volunteer your time, you will help them and you will help yourself. And when you interview, then you can say, yes, I have the qualifications and I'm, I'm working here as a volunteer nurse. Even if it's as a volunteer nurse, that will help you. Okay, next. Anyone here? Yes. Another one uh -huh. from Jamila. Mm -hmm. Do some employers accept nurses with a current working gap of six months or more? Again, it's it's case by case. If they feel like you still have the skills and it, it's easy to do a refresher when they train you, then they will be willing to give you a chance as long as you're willing to do the work, then yes. Anything else? Attorney Renato, do you have any last minute words of wisdom? No? <laughs> well, you guys, anything? Well, if you can think of something, just please let us know. This is a recorded event via Zoom and also via Facebook Live. What we'll do is we'll have our team um, of IT experts back in the US and, and make sure the audio and video quality is as good as it is now, um, especially with the Facebook, sometimes there's a lag or a delay, then this will be available, the recording will be available, made available for you via uh, my Facebook page, which is Christine Tiara, um, and also via our YouTube channel, which is Tungle Law. And if you email me, I will also have them, um, I'll provide you the links and also the PDFs. Uh, but I would like to, if there are no other questions, I would like to say thank you to several people. Uh, 
With us via Zoom is our wonderful off council attorney Hazel Betko all the way in California. Thank you for helping us uh, with your invaluable uh, and knowledgeable expertise and assistance with every step of the way for a lot of our RN hires and potential RN hires and facilities. Thank you, Attorney Hazel. Also here with the Tungo Law um, team is our office manager, aka my mom, the other big boss, Virgil Lamdagan Tungo. Mom, do you want to say a little something up here? You're actually live to, uh, they see you. Do you want to say something or just want to wave? Yeah. <laughs> And we also have Sir Langeun and Sir Raul, right? Um, doing all our high tech job today and all the cameras and laptops to make sure that we are able to provide this information to you um, and, and to make sure that you have all the information you need for now. Yes, was there one last question? Yeah, mm -hmm. we have from Nika. Mm -hmm. Inside experience is more than five years ago. Recent experience as a nurse. QA specialist via online from an American employee. Is this acceptable? Again, it'll have you'll have to talk to the specific facility <coughs> willing to work with you and train you. Right now, I mean, you have a little bit more um, and of, of experience, especially since I said with the uh, outbreak of COVID, they do a lot of telemedicine, teledoc. So if you have that experience of being able to talk to the doctor via the, you know, online and then um, assist in, in whatever the clients in each facility needs, then uh, they, that would be an advantage for you. Um, so that's something that you need to talk to and, and explore with a potential employer. Yes, I have, um, so, Ms. Tungal, Ms. Tungal raised her hand. Oh yes, so she she has, she has some, okay, so my mother is also a, a registered nurse and that's like I said why we went there in the first place. So um, mom, come up here and tell us your experience, sure. please. Oh, that was several years ago. That may be different. <laughs> I'm retired now, but just to give you um, something to learn about, um, you really need to have some experience, period. Because they will ask you about that in the interview. And once you have volunteer work, how many hours, please get your certification from the areas where you volunteered or tried to work, because that's very important. And also, in a nursing home or other facilities, you just have, during the orientation process, you just have to tell them that, even if your schedule for orientation is done, you have to tell them, I'm not really comfortable to start working on my own. You have to be assertive. Because if you want, then you will be at the mercy of doing everything on your own and feel so lost and frustrated, okay? Speak up. Don't yeah. take your mentality as quiet lang, one complain, that won't work. They want you to be upfront and be frank and tell them if you are not ready to work on your own, okay? Also, um, different hospitals and different nursing homes have different ways of training you. So if you listen to your friends telling you this and that, this and that, you can listen but let it pass to the other ear because sometimes it will be very frustrating when you hear them talk. Don't depend on that. Read the website, talk to the, talk to the leadership when they interview you. And um, sometimes you can also have your colleagues or co-nurses. I know of one uh, nurse that said that while they were processing and in the process of doing all these paperwork and requirements, they have a chat group. Have you heard about that? They have a chat group and compare notes. That could help you too. Okay? As long as it's on the positive side. Don't listen on the negative side. Again, please try to get some experience because that will really help you in the long process. It's just my input. Okay? I work, by the way, I started in a nursing home. 
and then I moved to a diabetic floor, and then I spent the last 18 years before I retired in the operating room. That was where I had the fun. So it's up to you what you want. But I had all those experiences. And now I'm a retired nurse. I'm working for the Tonga Law, doing different business. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for that invaluable insight. What my mother went through so many years ago, it still stands true right now with our registered nurses working in the U.S. Are Krizel and Christian here? Yes. So I don't want to put you on the spot, but they are already hired and waiting for their um, interviews so that they can go to the U.S. and start working. But would you, and you don't have to, like to talk about your experience, you know, going through here and actually to get your NCLEX and your visa screen? Because Christian already has his visa screen. Krizel is waiting for us. Did you get yours yet? Not yet? Okay, come on up here if you want. I'm not going to put you in the spot. You can say no, but no? Christian, no? Oh, okay. So he's still coming. That's fine. Krizel, do you want to say anything? No? <laughs> uh, but like I said, uh, if you want tips on how to get your NCLEX um, and also your visa screen, you can email me separately later or also um, talk to your friends who already have them. What works best for you to prep for these? Um, what's the most co cost effective for you? And don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to request per facility who's willing to sponsor you. Can we get a reimbursement? Can we please you know, put this as part of, of our package deal? And they will, you'll never get a yes if you don't ask. That's true. Oh, one more question. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. For example, if you have all of the requirements, uh, how much would we expect to to expand for the payment? Or do we ha are the employer from the U.S. pays your... Right now, yeah. the employers yes. that we have that are looking, they'll pay for everything. So we don't have to spend out of pocket for our The only thing that you would have to spend on right now are your NCLEX and Visa screen, right? And then we can, because they expect you to already have that. Um, if you're bringing family members, you'll have to pay that out of your own, of course, because they will pay for you and the processing and the legal fees. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. But it's case by case, right? This just so happens that the ones... Um, the facilities and the corporations that have hired us are willing to pay this. Um, it, it, there might be others, I mean, the ones that we have are willing to pay for and shoulder the costs that what we talk about, but there could be others if you apply somewhere else that are just willing to pay a portion instead of four. So as Attorney Reynado said, it depends on the facility or hospital willing to sponsor you, but right now they're very generous with their compensation packages because they really need RNs. Okay. Anyone else? I think that's it. We have quite a, a quiet crowd, but thank you for your questions. Do we have any Zoom questions, last minute Zoom? No? Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. Ah. You can ask questions in Cebu. I oh, but I had to brush up on my Tagalog. So for our clients to be magbisaya, na lang tayo, di ka po na po ko in English. Gatay last minute magbisaya. A question? Wala? Ay, naman, oh. But, so... Those joining us via Zoom, those joining us via Facebook Live, and of course who are in person today, thank you so much for your time. Um, and we will go ahead and have the recordings later. You can email us and there will be links on there provided for you. For those of you who are here, please stay a little longer. We have some refreshments for you. Okay? I'll check on that. Thank you. Bye for now. Have a good day. Have a good Sunday. Thank you.